thank you very much for taking the time joining us at this lovely day. Uh, you're gonna have, uh, oh yeah, I actually do have a, a new record out, The Deceivers, and uh, just with all the with all the stuff that's been going on in the whole world for the past two and a half years, was that a hard record for you guys to do, to write, to create, or was it actually more of you know, there's so much you know frustration going on, we're gonna pull this one out. Um. I think, you know, uh, like I've been saying, and, you know, I think, you know, having a big project to work on was very nice for us. It was great to have something to focus on, something positive, something hopeful, something inspiring, something that's, uh, that allows you to just forget, you know, I mean, it's escapism in, in a way, I guess, you know. And, um, you know, we didn't know when we were going to get to release it, when we were going to get to go back on the road. You know, there were so many question marks, you know, there were so many... Uh, um, there's a lot of negativity, a lot of, you know, depressing things going on. But, you know, now we're back and I think we're just, we're putting that behind us and we're moving forward now. And so. When you, you guys play a couple of shows already, I guess, and uh, uh, do you have, do you have uh, any, any, any moment or any special, you know, um, situation where you, where you would say, this is not like it used to be, this is different now? on stage or the touring stuff or at festivals you know what i think but for me personally i thought bef when the pandemic was going on when it at, at the height of the pandemic um we confirmed uh you know we had a, a u.s tour coming up uh, like a north american tour that we actually did in april may this year and um before that going into that i was thinking oh maybe it's going to be really different and uh you know you know i was just curious about how it was going to feel but you know it was just like it was just like nothing had ever happened, which is also weird. So, you know, but it was, um, I guess it's all up in your mind, you know. I think uh, some people, you know, I know people who got really deeply uh, depressed and really badly affected by the pandemic in various ways. And um, I have a lot of sympathy for that. But I think we, personally, I think I came, came through it okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um I still imagine after all those years and after all those records that you guys did that I imagine songwriting in uh, within Arch Enemy goes like this. You create a riff, you send it over to Jeff and Jeff goes like, no, hang on, wait a minute, let, wait, wait till you hear this one. And you go like, ha, it's nothing. Wait till you hear the other one. Is that, is that a little bit of reality or is it just <laughs> totally different? Oh, you know, it's not really a com competitive atmosphere, you know, it's a... Uh you know, it's um, it's supposed to be fun. You know, I, I write a lot with uh, Daniel, our drummer, and um, it's um, it's kind of like I don't really have a formula for making the music part. It's more, I just rely on um, this thing called inspiration to hit me. You know, and I just hope it's never gonna. Is this wood? I just hope it's never gonna stop coming. Most likely. <laughs> <laughs> Alisa, how, Alisa, how much do you ever say in this? You go like, I don't like this. No, we're not going to do this one. <laughs> no, Michael stands there with a whip and he says, sing. No. Sing, woman. Sing. <laughs> Scream. <laughs> no, yeah, of course, yeah. I mean, M Michael and Daniel send me instrumental versions of the songs, or sometimes Michael has already written lyrics for some of the songs, and then I interpret them the way I think it'll sound good, and then we record them, and we go back and forth, like, you know, really polishing things up, like sometimes changing some words, changing the title, sometimes even changing the rhythm or, a, like, a chorus even. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we just, like, like fine-tune it until it's ready to be uh, mixed and mastered. Um, you guys are... What, no, let's, let's hit it the other way. What do you think uh, Deceivers can do for you? Just in terms of whatever success means for you? I mean, I think already Deceivers has done a lot for us. And, you know, we just had a bunch of signing sessions where we met, like, hundreds and hundreds of people. And it seems like Deceivers has done a lot for them, too, which is really cool. I mean, it's the first album that we're releasing after, you know, the pandemic. So for us, it's just a milestone of just getting back into real life. And uh, for us, that feels really great. And we play already, I think, five or six songs from Deceivers in our live set, which is a huge amount of new songs to play. And they all go over super well. So that's really encouraging. And it makes it a lot of fun to play the new stuff. You know, with um, 
all your success and not just yours, but bands such as Machine Head and Amon Amarth and whatever you have, are you surprised by also sort of the commercial success of our and this form of extreme heavy metal? Because it, it, it wasn't like this earlier, you know? It Is was, there commercial it was success? I don't even know. Is there? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I thought so. <laughs> you, you guys yeah, kind of. I just think it's like you know. Of course, the metal scene is very strong. You know, like the and bands of our generation still have a big. Um, you know, a lot of people buy the physical format and stuff like that. Which is when it comes to, um, you know, mainstream music, it's kind of dead. You know, with the the, uh, the physical. Uh, aspect of it, right? So I think you know our you know thousands and thousands of metalheads go out and buy the uh, Deceivers the first week of release, like you did, and uh, we thank you for that. And you know it pushes uh, bands like Arch Enemy to the top of the charts, which yeah. was, was kind of impossible. You know, if you look when Iron Maiden released their albums in the 80s, they didn't have high chart positions yeah. because you know everything. You know, there was Michael Jackson and you know Die Straits and whatever you know, going wham, right, in the chart. So, you know, so the metal stuff was pushed down, you know, but now it's it's rising to the top. And, you know, it gives us a bit of a visibility for the whole genre, which I think is, is kind of cool. It's yeah. fun. And we, um, it's super, super nice. I mean, um, the music hasn't changed. I would say we're more un uncompromising than ever, you know, uh, speaking for Arch Enemy. It's just, uh, you know, it's screaming vocals. There's tons of guitar solos, f super fast drumming. But it's catchy, it's melodic, it's all of that, you know, but it's not, it's not like, uh, we haven't really changed. That's one of the things I am proud about, that we, of Arch Enemy, we have not tried to, you know, make it more commercially appealing, you know. It's just yeah. that we're doing what we do and the people come to us and enjoy it with us. And I think that's the beauty of metal, basically. Did you, did your management tell you, like, like you should do this and this and maybe you do a ballad for radio? Was no. there any pressure from, from outside? Never? No, never. Ah, oh, that's cool. No. And if there was, we wouldn't listen, you know. I mean, I wouldn't say we're stupid, but we're quite stubborn, you know, <laughs> in, in our ways. <laughs> yeah. And I think metal is, it should be, to me, you know, it's, uh, I mean, to us, I mean, it's, it's a self-expression, you know. It's not really about, you know, it's about expressing, not impressing. I would say, like, you know, Mainstream music is about, or pop music is about, to impress, to to create a buzz, to get it on the top of the charts. That's the goal. That's what you want. Whereas more, you know, we're expressing something, and it's going to the top of the charts or whatever, or reaching. We can headline a festival like Summer Breeze, right, in front of thousands of people, which is awesome. But it's not because that's a result of the music that we do, and that it connects with a lot of people, and that's the difference, I think. You guys play festivals now. You have a big tour in, uh, in fall coming up uh, uh, here in Europe. Yes. What can we expect? Dungeons, Dragons and Fireworks? Something like that. Not, sp not in that order, probably. <laughs> but, uh, you know, <laughs> we're doing... Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a killer show. You know, we got a new band called Unto Others opening up. Then it's Carcass, you know, a legendary band. And then we, it's, you know, Behemoth and Arch Enemy, which are, you know... Insane. Yeah, it's an insane lineup. And I think if you miss it, you're... You, yeah. Then You're not a good. Bad. That is bad. That is very bad. <laughs> be there, or being be square. There is good. Not being there is <laughs> exactly. I mean, you played in Carcass, right? Is there anything you gonna do while? Oh really? Oh them? no. Uh, well, I'm sure I'll be talking to them. You know, <laughs> I'm still. Uh, <laughs> you know, good. yeah, of course. I mean, you know, we're still on friendly terms and everything. That's uh, you know, it's just gonna be great to have them along for that tour. Yeah, I'm happy they could join us. <laughs> is there? Do you think there will be a point in time where you're gonna change the direction of this band and go like, it's, you know, the stuff we do, we've done it, and now we need to look into other directions, musically, whatever you have. Do you think this might be something that will come up eventually? Um, I, I just can't see, I mean, you know, I, f I feel that when I, you know, we, we just celebrated 25 years yeah. of the band, right, last year. And, you know, I'm not really a person that looks too much back, but I, st I, did, I, had, I did that for the 25th anniversary. I would listen to all the old albums and I wrote some words, a little thing about every album and some just some memories that came to mind, you know, and so that was something that we, because we couldn't really celebrate the 25th anniversary with a tour or something because of the pandemic. So I did that. And I, so I was looking in the rearview mirror and it's like, okay, actually we did something really cool, but, you know, I could see the evolution 
as I was listening to each album month by month or week by week, it was uh, became apparent that we, I mean, we have evolved, but it's been, I mean, I hate the word organic, you know, because it's overused, but I do feel that it was organic, you know, and that it was uh, natural, I should say. You know, it's just been whatever we're into at the time. And there has been, but I think, but there's also, you can, there are elements on the new album that you could say are typical Argent that you heard on the first album as well. You know, there's some bands are great at sounding exactly the same on each album. And I love some of those bands, you know, but if for us, it's a little bit more like a, you know, oh, we already did that. Let's try something a little bit different. But I don't think we go too far away from the original, uh, you know, what should I say? Formula. Not formula, but like the original, yeah, the music that we like. I mean, we actually like this kind of music. Well, I should say love this kind of music. So, you know, it's the speed, it's the melody, it's the heaviness. You know, you get into this music and it just sticks with you. You know, it gets under your skin. It gets, it's in your soul. It's in your heart. You know, and I don't think it's something that you just abandon and try to make an ambient album or something. You know, we, we all venture off in different directions with other projects, but um, for our enemy, I think it's pretty clear yeah. what we're doing. All right, um, Alyssa, do you have? Uh, do you feel any pressure being such a role model in whatever you stand for? You know, being. Family woman, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, being such a such a stronghold in heavy metal and to, uh, rep representing everything you, you represent, you know. I'm. I don't really feel pressure just because I am not pretending to be anything. I'm just existing as myself, and if people see that as, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it, a role model, yeah. then that's great because I think I'm a positive person and I think that I make positive choices, you know, uh, in my life and for other people and for the planet, you know, I think that I make a very strong effort to, you know, do no harm in my life and also bring people joy and, uh, you know, spread art and creativity and positivity because that's what I like, you know, that's what I like to do. I've always been like that since I was a little kid. So um, I don't feel pressure just because it's natural for me to be like that. I'm not, you know, it's not like I have to like think every day about doing that because it's just who I am. So um, I, yeah, I mean, I think there's definitely worse role models people could have. You know? <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, that, that inspires me. Like if people tell me that, which they do, like I said, we just did a bunch of signings and I had a lot of people come and tell me that they've been vegan for three years because of me or that Arch Enemy songs helped them through the pandemic or helped them through really dark times or things like that. And um, that's that inspires us, you know, because that means that we're actually connecting with people on a much deeper level. So it inspires us and motivates us to keep going. All right, I have almost no more further questions, Jonas. Um, The, the obligatory question is like, where are you going to see yourself in the band in five years' time? Hopefully, right here. With you. Headlining Summer Breeze and talking <laughs> to you. <laughs> On three days, though. Can Headlining every day. Yeah. yeah, we want to come back. 